Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on when you're watching this video. In this video, we are going to work through the exercise on slide 19 of lecture set number seven. In this exercise, we again will be computing a confidence interval, um, and we will be comparing, in this case, a confidence level at this, uh, a confidence interval with the same confidence level, but a change in Z score. Okay. All right, so what is the situation? We have a simple random sample of 15 adult tarantulas gave a sample mean carapace length of 17.544 millimeters. A normal probability plot for this SRS is given below. Constructing 90% confidence interval for mu if sigma equals 2.03. All right. So in this illustration, um, we have the following. So we are told the sample mean is 17.54. We are told the sample size is 15. Okay, so we have to check the assumptions of our confidence interval. So the first assumption is that the simp that a simple random sample was collected. And we know this is true because the description of the problem says a simple random sample of 15 adult tarantulas. Okay, and the second assumption, we want to verify or we need evidence that X bar is normal. All right, we're not told any, we're not given any information about the distribution of these carapace links. And we are not given any information um, or, and we're not given a large enough sample size that we can use the central limit theorem, but we are provided with a normal probability plot. Okay, so if we look at the normal probability plot for the sample, you can see that the observations appear to form a positive linear relationship um, with the quantiles of the normal distribution for a sample of size 15. There's a little bit, a little bit of deviation in the lower tail. So there's three points in the lower tail that fall below the line. And there's one point in the upper tail that's slightly above the line, but all of the points are well within the bands that are given. So in this case, we can probably say that the normality assumption is fine. Okay, and then we can say by a linear relationship, in normal probability plot. So you can see how we're using the techniques that we've established earlier in the semester to assist us in making our, in checking the assumptions of these inferential procedures. So there's three different situations. We either know we sampled from a normal population or a normally distributed population. The sample size is large enough that the central limit theorem kicks in, or we can use a normal probability plot of the sample to check for normality. The third assumption is that sigma is known. And in part A, we're told sigma is 2.03. Okay, B, suppose a simple random sample of 30 adult tarantulas, or sorry, <laughs> I should probably finish part A, right? Okay, so now we wanna construct the CI. We're building a 90% CI here. So we've seen lots of examples of the 90% CI. Okay, so this means that we have a 90% Confidence level. Okay. This means that alpha is one minus 0 0.90, which is 0 0.1. Okay, that means that our Z score is the Z score 0 0.1 over two, which is a Z score on 0 0.05, which is 1.645, right? And I've shown multiple examples of how to get this value at this point. So hopefully um, this is starting to look very familiar. And as I had mentioned before, uh, with confidence intervals using a Z score, it's really in your best interest to just memorize these Z scores because the 90% interval, the 95% interval, the 99% interval, they get used a lot. So it's easier to just know, okay, 90% CI, Z score 1.645. Okay, step two, x bar plus or minus 
z alpha over two sigma divided by the square root of n. This is 17.54 plus or minus 1.645 multiplied by 2.03 over the square root of 15. This is 17.54 plus or minus um, 0 0.610 or sorry, 0 0.8622, 0 0.862. Okay, so we add and subtract this value and we have 16.678 to 18.402. All right, so then we can say we are 90% confident that the mean carapace length for this population of adult tarantulas is between 16.678 and 18.402 millimeters. In part B, suppose a simple random sample of 30 adult tarantulas also gave a sample mean carapace length of 17.54. Okay, so we have the same mean. Will a 90% CI for this sample be more accurate than the interval in A? Explain. Okay, so for fixed confidence level, increasing sample size increases accuracy. And that should be fairly obvious because this is basically just playing on what we already know to be true about sampling error. The more information you collect, the better your estimate is going to be. So the more information we collect, the bigger the sample size that we collect, the better our interval is going to be. Okay, so then in part, uh, so that means that the 90% CI for n equals 30 will be more accurate than the 90% CI when n equals 15. Okay. So then in part C, we're asked to verify the, um, the results. Okay, now, in this situation, um, we're gonna have the same set of assumptions. So we need to check our assumptions before we build the interval. The only difference here is that we are not able to use the normal probability plot now because we've changed our uh, sample to n equals 30. But because we have 30 observations, X bar will be normal by the central limit theorem. Okay. So now we have the 90% CI. So we know from above that this means that our Z score is going to be the Z score on 0 0.05, which is 1.645. Okay, so that's step one. And then on step two, we have x bar plus or minus z alpha over two sigma divided by the square root of n. So this is gonna be 17.54 plus or minus 1.645 multiplied by 2.03 over the square root of 30. Okay, so that's gonna be 17.54 plus or minus 
zero point six one zero. Okay, and this gives us sixteen point nine three to eighteen point one five. All right. Okay, so from our previous examples, we can now verify the accuracy in two ways. We can compare the lengths of the intervals. So we can subtract the lower bound from the upper bound for each interval. The other way we can verify the result is by comparing the margin of errors. So verify since um, 0 0.610 is less than 0 0.862, the 90% CI for N equals 30 is more accurate. Okay. And that goes back to what I mentioned in a previous video. When you're verifying accuracy of confidence intervals, you can compare the lengths. So the shorter interval is considered more accurate, or you can compare the margins of error directly. So the interval with the smaller margin of error would be considered more accurate. And if you think about it, this makes sense because you are adding and subtracting this margin of error. So the length of the interval is actually just two times this value. So the smaller margin of error is going to result in an interval with a smaller length, which is therefore more accurate. All right, as always, if you have any questions, please let me know.